Hello and welcome to lecture 6 in electrochemistry. We're going to look at standard cell potential today. Of course these are the knowledge outcomes prescribed by Alberta Learning. These are the, um, they form the basis for the bulk of diploma exam questions you'll see. Hopefully you've been referring back to this page from time to time to get a sense of how you're progressing and mastering the material. Um, a version of the following table is found in your data booklet and it describes the potential energy of electrons in various chemical systems. Um, the green arrow indicates uh, the spontaneous flow of electrons. They flow from uh, regions of high potential energy, which are the reactions you see down near the bottom of the page, to regions of lower potential energy, which you see up at the top right. Um, it, it, it tabulates a measure of uh, electrical potential energy for each of the listed chemical systems in relation to a, a ground state or a standard uh, chemical system, namely the hydrogen half reaction. And you see that in the middle of the table with zero volts. The electrons in this half reaction are by agreement assigned an electrical potential energy of zero volts. And um, to compare the electrical potential of the various half reactions you see, we establish a standard cell, cell to do the testing. A standard cell is simply a voltaic cell in which each of the half reactions contains all entities shown uh, at SATP conditions uh, and with a concentration of uh, one mole per liter. The standard cell potential then becomes the maximum electrical potential difference of the cell operating under standard conditions. Um, it's the potential energy difference between the cathode and the anode. Um, it's also a measure of the ability of a standard half cell to attract electrons and to undergo reduction. The half cell with the greatest attraction to the electrons will gain the electrons from the half cell with the lower reduction potential. And we calculate this with the following equation. That the electrical potential for the overall cell equals the electrical potential for the cathode minus the electrical potential for the anode. We can think of, think of this equation in terms of the chemical reactions taking place at least each of the electrodes. So the chemical potential, uh, uh, electrical potential of the cell equals the uh, electrical potential of the reduction minus the electrical potential of the oxidation. Um, of course, it's impossible to run a half reaction in isolation. Every oxidation must be accompanied by a reduction. So as we said, we measure the reduction potential of all half cells against the standard half cell. And the standard half cell we use is the hydrogen half cell. Looks like this. And by international agreement, it's assigned a uh, electrical potential of zero volts. Just as gravitational potential energy is determined relative to ground level, electrical potential energy is established relative to this standard half reaction. The first thing to note in these calculations is we're not referring to electrical potential, but to an electrical potential difference between the half reaction under study and this hydrogen half reaction. So it's always a relative measure. And again, standard conditions mean, mean one mole per liter concentrations of any electrolytes and SATP conditions of temperature and pressure, 25 degrees Celsius and 100 kilopascals pressure. Um, we use an inert electrode. Typically, it's platinum for the hydrogen half reaction because um, um, there's no sort of no way to convert hydrogen into a solid substrate to perform this uh, the function of the electrode. And again, uh, the standard cell uh, electrical potential of all other half reactions is determined based upon this reference half cell. Uh, and again, standard cell potential is simply another way of saying voltage. So those, those are the units for um, standard cell potential. So for this particular system, then, we wanted to turn, determine the potential difference between the cathode and the anode. Here's the cathodic reaction. Uh, I've taken this uh, reduction from the, um, the data booklet. It's got a, a cell potential. At plus, it's got an electrical potential rather of positive 0.34 volts. The oxidation has got a 
electrical potential of minus 0.76 volts. And you'll notice I flipped the reaction. In the data book, it's written as a reduction, but I've written it as a oxidation. Um, what I haven't done, though, is I have not changed the sign of its electrical potential. And, and that's important. You might recall us flipping equations in thermochemistry, and when we did, we changed the sign of the enthalpy. Uh, and that was appropriate. Here we don't. Here we're, we're measuring potential energy. Uh, and I'll, I'll draw the analogy to walking up a, a flight of stairs versus walking down a flight of stairs. It doesn't matter if you're going up the stairs or down the stairs. Your potential energy on every, any given step doesn't change. The direction you're moving has no impact on your potential energy on any given step. And that's the case um, for this um, electrical potential table. Whether or not uh, the zinc is being oxidized or reduced, while the electrons are in the zinc half cell, they'll have the same electrical potential. So again, even though I flipped this, the, the equation to write it as an oxidation, its electrical potential does not change. Here's our equation then for the overall electrical potential of the cell. We substitute in our values and we get a positive 1.10 volts. And that's consistent with what we've seen for this copper zinc uh, battery previously. The, the positive sign indicates a spontaneous redox reaction will take place and electrons will flow. So here's the um, overall um, redox equation together with, with its cell potential under standard conditions. Um, here's another one, the copper-silver um, voltaic cell, and they want us to determine the electrical potential difference of the cell. So here's the cathodic reaction, and again, I've taken this out of the data booklet. The um, silver goes through reduction. Here's the uh, the reaction taking place at the anode, and I flipped this from our data booklet, but again, I have not changed the electric potential um, when the electrons are in this copper half reaction. Even though I flipped the equation, I left the electrical potential the same. Here's our equation for determining uh, electrical potential difference. We substitute in uh, the values for both the cathode and the anode, and we come up with a cell potential difference of positive 0.46 volts. And then we rewrite our entire redox reaction together with, with its electrical potential difference. And again, we've seen this reaction to be a spontaneous reaction, so we get this positive voltage. So here's our um, a further question involving dichromate and lead. They want us to determine the standard cell potential difference. So here's what's going taking place at the, at the cathode. It's the dichromate being uh, reduced with a cell potential uh, of uh, positive 1.23 volts. At the anode, the lead is being oxidized, and its uh, cell potential is uh, half cell potential is minus 0.13 volts. Again, we flipped the equation to reflect an oxidation, but we have not changed the electrical potential sign. The equation, the, the overall potential difference for the cell is the uh, electrical potential of the cathode minus electrical potential of the anode. We substitute in, and again, we come up with another positive value, positive 1.36 volts. So here's our overall redox reaction taking place, and um, here's the overall electrical potential difference of the cell. I think I've got one more question. Yeah, if we adopt the silver sulfide half reaction as the standard half reaction, what happens to the cell potential difference of the following voltaic cell? So it's the copper silver cell, and we just looked at that previously. So what's happening here is we're going off the hydrogen half cell, and we're making the silver sulfide half reaction the standard. So we're setting that at zero volts. So um, you see it down here. I, this is just a snip of part of your reduction table. And you see down at the very bottom, the silver sulfide has had its, um, its uh, electrical potential set at zero volts. And we've done that by adding 0.69 volts to the previously uh, recorded uh, relative electrical potential. But what that does, that shifts the entire table. 
so that we have to add 0.69 volts to each and every one of these electrical potentials. And I've done that here for the copper half reaction and for the silver half reaction. And so we'll use these new amended values to determine the electrical potential difference for the copper silver battery. And this is a very common diploma question. Hopefully um, you're able to see just by um, a sense of how we've made these changes, what's going to happen to our potential difference for the, the overall cell itself. So here's the question again. Here's the cathodic reaction. And you'll notice that we're showing the, the new voltage. Here's the, the anode. We flipped the equation, but we haven't changed the sign on the electrical potential. But we've added in the 0.69 volts after going to the silver sulfide standard. Here's our equation. We substitute in our values. And lo and behold, we get the exact same electrical potential difference we had for this cell previously. So if we move off the hydrogen standard to any other standard, we're going to get the same potential difference uh, for if we are looking at the, the same, um, um, the same uh, voltaic cell. So again, the standard cell potential, the redox equation together with standard cell potential does not change, even though we've gone off the hydrogen half cell. Um, so that concludes my equations on standard cell potential. Um, I'll, um, hopefully you found it of some value. I'll see you next time when we talk about voltaic cells. Thank you.